for the first time, Beijing is admitting that a secret balloon spotted over Latin America this weekend belongs to China and was, quote, used for flight tests, close quote. A Chinese foreign ministry official says it is, it, that balloon seriously deviated from its planned course due to weather. Selena Wang joins us live in Beijing. You heard what MJ said at the White House, the position of the Biden administration. What is the position of Chinese officials this morning? Well, Poppy, they're still sticking to their claim that it was a weather balloon, but now for the first time, they're acknowledging another balloon in addition to the one spotted over the U.S. When I asked the Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson about that balloon spotted over Latin America, she said it came from China. And as for how it got there, well, the explanation was very similar to Beijing's claim of how the other balloon entered the U.S. She told me the balloon over Latin America was civilian, and due to the weather and limited ability to control the airship, it drifted into the area by, quote, mistake. And take a listen, Poppy, to this other exchange I had at the press briefing. Thank you. The U.S. is confident, though, that what they shot down is, in fact, a spy balloon, disclosing that it contains surveillance equipment, equipment not normally associated with civilian research, like collection pod equipment and solar panels. And the balloon was flying over sensitive areas. Can you help us understand how this could be a weather balloon? The unmanned airship is also civilian in nature. We have made it clear that this was an unexpected incident caused by force majeure. But the U.S. side is deliberately hyping it up and even attacking it by force, which is unacceptable and irresponsible. And Poppy State Media is parroting that line and also blaming U.S. domestic politics for escalating things. But look, regardless if these moves by China were deliberate or clumsy miscalculations, they're embarrassing for Beijing. Xi Jinping has been on a charm offensive, trying to reset relations with countries that were badly damaged during the pandemic. And now this sets China back diplomatically, making it even harder for Beijing to convince the world that it can play by international rules. Poppy. Absolutely. Selena Wang, thank you for that reporting from Beijing. The perfect person to discuss this now, Democratic Congressman Jim Himes of Connecticut. He is a ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee. Good morning. Thank you for coming in. I appreciate it. Good morning, Don. So let's get to it. Have you gotten any updates about what they have found in this debris? Uh, no, and I'm not sure anybody has because we've been uh, out of D.C. for the weekend, so we haven't been in a position to go into a uh, skiff to get a classified briefing. But I do anticipate that either today uh, or in the very near future we'll get briefed on what this is all about. Do you think anything that they will find will be useful intelligence? Oh, absolutely. There's no question about that. And that's, that's one of the elements that is being lost in this whole conversation. You know, being able to capture, hopefully undamaged, who knows, um, you know, what should be their cutting edge surveillance technology is just a huge intelligence win. Yeah, but you, so you, you will get a briefing. You haven't gotten a briefing on this, right? That's correct, yeah. Because I understand you're going to receive a briefing on this incident tomorrow as a member of the so called Gang of Eight. What are you hoping to hear? Well, um, you know, people, you're hearing a lot of breathless criticism of the decision-making process that the president has. A lot of that, of course, is just partisan, right? You know, the, the very same senators who haven't been briefed, who are, you know, all over Joe Biden right now, uh, had Joe Biden shot this thing down against the advice of his military advisors, they'd be criticizing him for that. What we are going to learn is what the TikTok was, what was the decisions made. What we may not be able to talk about is um, there's a lot of value in observing an asset like this. You know, what did we learn by watching this thing over a period of time? When were the decisions taken? And most interestingly, what are we going to learn about the equipment, right? Mm -hmm. Who made the semiconductors that are on this thing? What are its capabilities? We'll learn a lot. Well, speaking of what you said in the first part of your answer, your colleague on the House Intelligence Committee, uh, Republican Mike Turner of Ohio, was very critical of the fact that the balloon was allowed to enter U.S. airspace in the first, in the first place. Listen to this, and then we'll discuss. This should never have been allowed uh, to enter the United States, and it never should have been allowed to complete its mission. If you ask somebody to draw an X at every place where our sensitive missile defense sites, our nuclear weapons infrastructure, our nuclear weapons sites are, you would put them all along this path. Uh, clearly, this was an attempt by China to gather information to defeat our command and control of our sensitive missile defense and nuclear weapon sites, and that certainly is an urgency that this administration does not recognize. Do you agree with his assessment? Do you think that the Pentagon and the White House should have acted faster? Well, again, I, you know, Mike, Mike articulates one point of view. He may turn out to be true. He doesn't know right now any more than I know exactly what the decision-making process was. Look, um, there is enormous value in observing up close and personal an asset like this. What are its capabilities? How does it maneuver? What is it collecting? What is it emanating? Uh, you know, we need to see... Uh, whether the decision was deliberate or whether it was careless. I, I'm going to withhold judgment until we, until we get that TikTok. Correct me if I'm wrong. You did not want them to shoot it down, did you? That was not 
what, what you wanted. When I learned, when America learned, that this was not a weapons platform, it presented no threat to the American people, as somebody who is focused on intelligence, um, I'm, I would like to get this thing, you know, there was a lot, let's shoot it down over land. As I said, sort of on social media, I would much rather have this thing whole than be, you know, scraping its charred remains off a field in Nebraska. So there's just immense intelligence value in having this thing brought down over water where we can salvage it in a more, hopefully, complete fashion. And now that it is shot down, because you, you want to have the intelligence intact. Do you, do you think that this precludes that? No, no, I think it, I think, um, again, I think bringing it down over water where uh, we have naval capabilities to get this thing um, is a lot better than what it would have looked like had it been shot down and, you know, fallen into a granite mountaintop. So, listen, um, this is not the first time that this has happened, right? And you have insinuated that the U.S. also uses similar technology in other parts of the world. Do you fear retaliation from China? I don't fear retaliation by China. They're the aggressor here, make no mistake. They flew uh, a, a military asset over our uh, sovereign territory. So no, I don't, uh, you know. By the way, there's gonna be retaliation against whoever engineered this operation inside Beijing. What a, what a colossal embarrassment this is for the Chinese. Um, but no, I think, um, uh, and, 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 you know, to be very clear here, uh, there's a lot of people who are saying this is new and unprecedented. It's not. We've mm -hmm. seen these balloons elsewhere. Um, it should come as no surprise to anybody that the Chinese are spending billions and billions of dollars uh, trying to get our secrets. This is what they do. This is a particularly clumsy attempt to do so. So then all the hyperventilation over this, is this hypocrisy on our part then? Because if we do the same thing and we shoot it down, then... What? Well, it's not hypocrisy because we haven't flown any balloons over, over Chinese airspace. That's a really aggressive and, by the way, stupid act. And so, you know, if they're angry that we shot this thing down, sorry, guys, don't fly your military assets over our country. Um, all I'm saying here now is that we should withhold judgment until we know all of the facts about what was on that thing, what it was doing, and what the decision-making process was. Do you was. think Tony Blinken postponing the trip, do you think that was right? I think that was exactly proportional, right? Um, you know, it's a, it's, again, it's a black eye for China. I think uh, the Secretary of State did exactly the right thing. Let's Talk State of the Union tomorrow. What are you expecting from the president? Well, I can tell you what I'm hoping from the president. Um, you know, uh, I'm hoping at a, a two-year retrospective. Uh, this president and a Democratic Congress that capped the price of insulin for Americans at $35, that for the first time ever, well, not ever, but in a generation, did a major infrastructure investment that in a bipartisan way got a semiconductor deal done so that we don't have to worry about getting our semiconductors for China. The list of accomplishments in the last two years uh, is really pretty dramatic, and I hope that he focuses on those kitchen table issues after a week of talking about balloons. It is interesting. Everybody counted Joe Biden out even in, you know, when he was running, and now that he's President Biden, people say, why is he trying to work with the Republicans? This whole bipartisanship, he's not going to get anything accomplished. He has defied expectations. And yet, there's new polling out in the Washington Post and ABC News that among voters who lean Democratic, only 31% would like to see President Biden run in 2024. 58% would like to see someone else at the top of your party's tickets. What say, ticket, what say you about that? What I say is that if the American people look at what he did in his first two years when the Democrats had the House and the Senate, Again, I could spend 10 minutes talking about it, but lower drug prices, investments in infrastructure, the first in a generation uh, gun safety bill, a lot of it done on a bipartisan basis. The Republicans, what are they offering right now? They're taking Ilan Omar off congressional committees. We voted on a resolution to condemn socialism, right? I want the American people to see the contrast between a president, love him or hate him, who is delivering for the American people and the extremism that we're seeing in the Republican. This polling office. is only a snapshot in time. Do you see him on the ticket and running again. You know, that's obviously a deeply personal decision for him and his family. I don't, uh, I, I do intelligence, but I don't have information on Would that you like him decision. to run? You know, I think he's got a heck of a record to run on. Uh, and at the end, we'll see. And the, the contrast with Republicans in the next two years. So I think that if he chooses to run, he's going to be a very strong candidate. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you, Don. Always a pleasure.